Could everyone go ahead and take their seats, please? For those of you that might be visiting today, uh, one of the traditions is the players coming down the, the hill onto the field. Uh, only thing I can say that if coach is here now, you guys would probably have to do that over again. <laughs> For those of you who may not know me, my name is Harvey Gant, and I want to welcome everyone to Bruce Field, the former home of the Pickens Blue Flame and the celebration of life for Coach Bill Isaacs. Thank you to everyone attending today and showing your support for a legendary coach. The family wanted to thank the mayor, the city of Charlotte, city of Charlotte, I'm sorry, I'm from Charlotte. Sorry, mayor. Um, city of Pickens for allowing us to utilize the stadium for this event. Thank you to all the former players, friends of the family that took it upon themselves to prepare this stadium for his final game for Coach Isaacs. Thank you to all, as there are many that have in one way or another contributed to put this event together in such a short period of time. The format of this celebration will probably be a little different than any other that you go to. Sometimes we do things different here. We might run trip right counter 13 times in a row. <laughs> There will be a group of speakers that will come to the microphone and give a brief speech. That includes everybody but me and mine will not be brief. When the speakers are finished, the family would like for all to come onto the field and share this special time with the family and each other. There's a register for everyone to sign in, uh, some leather scrapbooks on the tables that if you would uh, write a message, anytime you sign your name or write a message, be sure that you either put the years that you were here or the year you graduated, because that's kind of how we all tie each other together. At this time, I am going to ask everyone to stand, remove your cover. I'm going to call up Steve Sugar, the DNR chaplain. After he's completed, if you'll remain standing, as Steve Rackley will come up and lead the national anthem. You know, my granddaddy said that um, heaven is like where everybody sits in the family section. Today is one of those days. I'm going to read uh, just, uh, we're going to pray uh, just a few of the words out of Blessed Assurance. I'm going to offer a brief prayer, and we're going to conclude by praying the Lord's Prayer, as Coach Isaac would have us to do today. He would want you to do that with us, <clears throat> not in His honor, uh, but to glorify God. May we pray. Blessed Assurance. Jesus is mine, oh what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Holy and good God, we thank You for these two men called out of our midst, taken from us. Hold us today that in their memory their lives would live on for your glory. Guide us as a group and as a family and as a community and even as a state that we might embrace your goodness today, that we might see that which is honorable and noble in the midst of that which is broken and hurting. Guide our very souls that we might love you. And we humbly pray that you would do these things, praying even as Christ taught us to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth 
as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the balls bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say this time we're going to start our list of speakers. Uh, after, at the end, I will mention if there's anyone here, former player, friend, student, sister, brother, educator, it doesn't matter. If you would like to say something, we invite you down. The family would love for you to come down and say it. If not, that's fine because everybody's going to come down the field at the end. Anyway. At this time, I want to call up uh, Coach Andy Virgil. Thank you. Uh, I'm not real good at this sort of thing, and when Bart asked me to speak, and then later Mike asked me to speak. I said, I don't think so. <laughs> well, a couple of days, over the next couple of days, I thought about it, and laying in bed at night, pondering it. I think Bill wants me to say a few things about our relationship. So it all started back in 1960. I've known him 55 years. Long time. So in 1960, I was starting my college career at App State. Bill was a junior. Well, a couple of years he graduated, he worked for a year, and the coaching bug bit him. And he uh, got a, an assistant job down at Mullins, South Carolina. And then uh, I got my graduate year. 1965, I was finishing up on my master's. Bill came back to Boone. He came to me, he said, Andy, you know, I just got the head coaching job at Pickett's High School, small school, in, well, what, small 3A, but school.
schools in South Carolina. Come down and take a look at it and see if you'll come be my coach, assistant coach. With me. Back in those days, high school teams had two coaches, a head coach and an assistant, and maybe if you were lucky enough, you had a third coach. But that's not a lot. So I came down, took the job, and uh, being a young 22-year-old guy, single guy, Pickens didn't have a whole lot to offer. <laughs> so I spent most of my free time at Bill and Peggy's house. I think poor old Peggy thought she had adopted another son, you know. <laughs> you know, so I ate over there. We watched football games, Super Bowls. Mike and Crystal were just little things. We'd play games. I taught Mike how to play chess. And then the rascal beat me in four moves, <laughs> which I've never forgotten. <laughs> Okay, but anyway, uh, you know, Bill and I, being young, you know, full of spirit, we come into this program which had won one game out of the last 22. And we thought, if you excuse the expression, full of piss and vinegar, we thought, we thought we'd got to turn the program around right away. Well, you know, the God's gift to heaven, uh, God's gift to coaching is, uh, didn't quite work out that way. We won one game, though, and it was homecoming right here on this field. We beat Chapman. Well, the next year, we got three, seven, and one. You know, under Bill's leadership, we were going better and better. After three, seven, and one, we went six, four, and one. And then we went 7-3-1, and, and then in 1969, a little bit of a slide back, 5-5-1. Five, five but that 69 team is the team that started the 57-game win streak, which is a state record. We went 10-0 in 70, 10-0 in 71, 72, 73, 74. I mean, that's amazing. I didn't appreciate it. I appreciate it now. Uh, but we had an outstanding season. And, and you know, five Western 3A, five Western 3A conference championships in that ring string. And uh, we, uh, Out of the decade of the 70s, we were able to win 89 games, lose 10, and tie one. Back in those days, ties stood. They did. They changed that later. Uh, so what it all boils down to is that, you know, I love Bill, and I know it's a sad time and that we have the tendency to grieve and cry, but we aren't doing what Bill wants. You know, Bill wants us to remember him in joy and happiness and all the good relationships we have with him, whether it's <clears throat> husband, father, grandfather, teacher, coach, fishing buddy, or friend. Next, I want to bring up uh, another fellow coach, um, Mike Anthony, uh, who I believe spent some time at uh, Easley and uh, Union, and uh, I'll let him explain that uh, 13 times in a row thing to you. 
said. We, uh, <laughs> let, me, let me say first of all, Mike, uh, Mike can say that, uh, can vouch for this. I called him back in March. Uh, I, I guess it was God's will that, that this happened. And, and I, I was getting some hats from DNR. I wanted him to give me some hats for some constituents in union. And he said, Coach, he said, uh, Daddy's birthday's tomorrow. He'll be 75. I said, I said, Mike, text me his number. And he texted me the number. And I called him. Would you believe Bill and I was talking an hour? <laughs> we talked an hour. And I got set up here by Harvey because uh, I was that coach who was on the other side over there that stood there and watched 13 times in a row trip right counter. <laughs> I learned that call. It was a, how many of you 79 team? We were, we were 9 0 at Carolina High School. The only game we lost that year was Pickens Blue Flame. And I stand here, I stand here today and I told Hamp and some of those guys a minute ago, you don't know how intimidating standing on that side that this wall and the way this place is. It's intimidating to the teams that come in. You, you used to have a flame over there. That thing was the loudest thing. I said, why do they do that? And, it, and I see now the traditions that were built by Coach was just unbelievable. I even had a situation, I had a great opportunity to do this. I became the coach in 92 at Easley. That didn't work too good, but anyway, I got fired there too. But uh, I did something that today I'm very proud I did, even though I caught some flack over it. We waited until, we didn't, we didn't warm up on this field, we warmed up in Easley drove our team up here. You guys probably, he probably did that with y'all sometime. And we walked down that hill at five to eight. And I did that, I did something that was a trademark of Bill Isaacs. I put a towel around my neck that led that team down that hill over there. I'm proud of that today. I promise you. I'm proud that I, was, I did that. And he and I talked about that quite a bit. Also, I, I, I'll close by this, guys. It's a lot easier for me to talk to players than it is to these people maybe that that uh, didn't play but are here to honor me. The legacy of Coach Isaacs will live in and through every one of you. What you've given to your own family. He and I talked about it many times. Discipline plus character equals success. And that's exactly what these guys, these coaches from Pickens gave you guys. And Miss Peggy, the greatest thing he had was his family. And everybody here knows that. Everybody here. If you're here to honor him today, you are here also to honor this family. Thank you so much for letting me come. He was not only my coach and my mentor, but he was also my friend. Coach Hodges was tough on us, but we knew he cared. And we also knew who was in charge. That would be Miss Isaac. <laughs> he was a big influence on many of our lives, and many of you are sitting out there today. And I thank you so much for coming. It looks great. I know Coach Virgil talked about the 57 game win streak and how it's a seal of state record today. If you were a member of that, any of those teams, please stand up right now. Please stay, please stay standing just for a second. You, you guys did something along with Coach Isaacs, Coach Virgil, and Coach Allison 
that hadn't been done here in a long time. First of all, you shut down the city of Pickens on Friday night. <laughs> you brought this community together like it never has been brought together before. And everybody knew what they were going to do on Friday nights in football, in football season. They were going to see the Blue Flame play. Thank you very much, guys. Y'all notice I have stuff written down. I, I, I can't believe Coach Verbal can quote every statistic ever been said here, and I can't remember anything, so I have to write things down. Now, many of you don't know this, probably, but Coach Isaacs also coached basketball. And in 1967-68 basketball season, he coached the very first conference championship for Pickens High School. We also won 20 games that year. He had probably got on to me for doing that. <laughs> he told us when, when, he took, when he started taking our basketball team that he didn't know much about basketball, but we would never lose a game because we weren't in shape. Guys, we never lost one because we weren't in shape. We were in shape. As a matter of fact, I applied that philosophy to some of my basketball teams. Coach believed in doing things the right way. He never cut corners. His teams were always the best dressed and equipped possible. He spent countless, thankless hours mowing, <coughs> fertilizing, watering and painting Bruce Field so it could be a place that all of us could be proud of. did it look great today. He didn't care how popular his decisions were because he always did what was right for his team for Pickens High School. He taught us to work hard, and the team was more important than any one of us. But none of us outworked Coach Isaacs. On Friday nights, after the game was over, and everybody had gone home, Coach was already preparing for the next week. He would leave around 12 o'clock at night, on Friday nights, drive to Greenville, and pick up the film, which you had to do at those times, at Graham Globe in Greenville, drive back, and had already reviewed the film before we got there on Saturday morning. Coach was an innovator, too. Our, our uniforms were second to none. I, if, if you see the uniforms some of these guys are wearing right now, nobody had uniforms like us. We were the first team to wear white shoes. And when a Seneca coach made a statement before playing us the week, the week before he played us, that he was coming to the hole to play the country boys. When the blue flame came down the hill, they came down to the sounds of, thank God I'm a country boy. <laughs> Being from the North, North Carolina, too, he loved snow and loved to drive in snow. And any time there was a report of snow, Miss Isaacs can tell you this, we were headed out. He had to call and say, get your sled ready, and we would head out. One night, we decided we'd go to the top of Caesar's head in his van with no chains. <laughs> hey, we made it. And we wanted to go to the other side, but the voice of reason <laughs> said no. So we didn't. And on the way back down, we had to move about three or four trees to get down. I will always be grateful to Coach and Miss Isaacs during the time my parents were declining. I could always go over and talk with them, and they helped me through some very hard times. Coach also gave me the chance to fulfill my life dream of being a coach. 
The best advice he gave me was simple, but also hard to do. He told me that if I, if I could not put my arm around a kid whose parents were cussing me in the stands, I needed to get out of coaching. Coach put his arm around a lot of us here. Recently, when Coach went through some tough health problems, we thought we were going to lose him. But he showed us how tough he was by pulling through that. I got a chance to tell him while he was in the hospital how much he meant to me. Coach and Miss Isaacs have been a tremendous effect on a lot of us here today. We'll never understand why this happened. But our prayers go out to Miss Isaacs and Crystal and Mike and the rest of the family. I love y'all very much. speak the other day, he says, Coach, I got a timer on you. <laughs> so don't worry, I won't be here too long because Mike's back there with his timer. In the spring of 1970, I was serving the U.S. Army at Fort Hood, Texas. And Coach Isaacs called me on a Friday afternoon and offered me a coaching job at Pickens High School. I had never been to Pickens in my life, and I had never met Coach Isaacs before. But he offered me the job on that first conversation. So on the following Monday, I called him back and took the job and came here in July of 1970. I never realized at that time how fortunate I was going to be to step into one of the winningest high school football programs in the state of South Carolina. Coach Verde has already reiterated the records that those teams set, and those were truly the glory years of Pickens football. Coach Isaacs literally put Pickens on the map. I was always thankful to be a small part of that. Coach was an excellent teacher of the game, and he was an excellent leader. One of the main attributes he has as, as a coach was he exuded confidence. Sometimes before the games, the coaches would get together and kind of say out loud what they thought about how the game was going to go, and he was always the one that was the most confident. And he always was the one who said, we're going to win this game. And because of that, that quickly spilled over onto the players. And when they took the field, they knew they were going to win. And that, of course, goes a long way in winning that game. Coach was tough and demanding in the way that any successful coach has to be. Coach some has already alluded to how tough coach was in battling through illnesses over these years. I had two quick stories, one of them kind of funny and one of them not funny at all, about how tough coach really was. One year, playing Berea for the conference championship, both teams undefeated, last game of the regular season at Berea. We had agreed all year long to wear shorts until we lost. Well, we hadn't lost yet, but the trouble was it was 32 degrees that night. <laughs> and all the coaches, except Coach Isaacs and Terry Strickland, showed up with pants on. But Bill Isaacs had on his shorts. And we laughed all the game about it because we were, it turned out we routed Berea that night and won the conference championship. Well, he laughed. We laughed at him during the game, but after the game, he laughed at us because we won and he had on shorts. The other story about how tough he was was, was a, a night I'll never forget. On a Thursday night, we played a JV game down here, and Coach always was the last one to leave the stadium because he cut the lights off. And we would always go on up and start washing the clothes and stuff and be up there in the gym. And that night, for the longest time, he never showed up. 
And we started saying, where in the world is Coach Isaac? And finally, after about 30, 40 minutes of waiting and wondering where in the world he was at, he came literally dragging himself in the back door of the gym, all bloody and bruised up. He had fallen off the top step up there of that press box onto the concrete down here by himself. And when he finally got strength back up, he literally crawled across the street, crawled himself into the back of the gym. Later that night, he had emergency surgery on his wrist and his arm. And we had a game the next night, you know, but guess what? He was there with a sling on, just like I was. Not only was Coach tough, he was very caring. He loved his players, and he cared for each and every one of them, whether they started, second string, whatever. One night, we were routing somebody real badly, and we were substituting, and I hadn't substituted my position yet. And Coach came over and said to me, why well, hadn't you got your other players in there, Coach? He kind of stunned me. He said, they work just as hard and long as anybody else, and they deserve to be out there just as much as the starters. So get them in. And he was right. Uh, not only did Coach love the team and the blue flame, and we all knew he was the head of the big blue machine. He loved his family immensely, each and every one of them. In these last few years when we both were retired, when we would visit with each other, we always got around to talking about our families and ask each other about our spouses and our children and our grandchildren and so forth. And it was so obvious how much he loved every one of his family. And I'd like to close with this. Every once in a while, after a football practice, when Coach, I guess, thought maybe a couple of the players were thinking a little bit too much of themselves, too big for their britches, we would go get a bucket, he would go get a bucket of water and circle the team around it, and he would ask one of those certain individuals to stick their hand in that bucket and pull it out and see what was left. Was there a hole going to be left because of you? And, of course, there wasn't a hole. Trying to show them that they could be done without. They were, they were not irreplaceable. Well, Coach has put his hand in the bucket and the hole's still there because he's truly irreplaceable. Thank you.